this is a battlefield. What you do here has battle importance. Here in this quiet ward is where you fight. Here, flat on your back, what's there to do except wait? What's there to fight except time? Six weeks at least for this man, if he's lucky. For this man, four to eight months. Maybe that's you, months ahead, long, long afternoons, nights when you can't sleep, hours that feel like days, days that hang on like weeks. And then there's the ceiling, nice white ceiling, plenty of time to count every nail, every crack. But that's all, that's all there is. That's what you think, brother, look out the window. What's going on here, is this a hospital? Yes, it is, but there's something new in this hospital. Not just medical equipment, but an idea with a punch and a bounce, an idea that'll lift you out of bed into the sunshine. It's a plan, a plan that works. It begins today with you. An officer will come in to see you on your first day in the ward. He's the convalescent training program officer. His job is you, your hobbies your interests, your ambitions. He wants to hear about everything except your operation. He'll show you how this program is shaped and planned around you. You're an aerial engineer. Your arm smashed by a cannon shell. Now you're afraid you'll forget everything you ever learned. You won't. You're a radio operator, afraid you'll lose your touch. You won't because something's going to be done about it. Healing a wound or a fracture or recovering from illness is usually a long process, but it can be speeded up. You want to get out. The Air Force wants you out, and so does the hospital. Well, this program is aimed at getting you out, healthier than you were before. It's going to exercise your body and your mind, not just for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but from the day you start to convalesce. You're going to get healthy faster. Here are the facts. Careful studies were made of patients with all kinds of illnesses to determine the time needed for convalescence. For example, a study was made of two groups of soldiers hospitalized with virus pneumonia. One group was given the benefits of the convalescent training program, the other wasn't. Here's the group that did not have it. They averaged 45 days of hospitalization and 30% of them had a recurrence of the illness and had to come back to the hospital. But the other groups, the ones getting CTP, averaged only 31 hospital days and only 3% of the cases recurred. Here's how the program works. Here's how it starts with exercise. However, it's not just exercise, but special exercise for what you particularly need. If you're weak in the head, this won't do much good. But if you're just physically weak, this will put your muscles back to work. What, calisthenics again? Can't a guy go brick in peace and quiet even in a hospital? <laughs> well, he can, but he'll slide back physically and mentally. Of course, going the other way, going uphill, is hard, and it's slow. And at times it may be painful. Your body's been hurt. It's afraid to move. Those slashed muscles, those fractured bones, those torn and lacerated nerves, shouldn't you let them alone, let them rest, let nature take care of them? The answer is no. Here's the scientific reason. This is the portrait of a muscle. Poor old muscle. Wasn't exercised during months in bed. The fibers have shriveled, fats accumulated. The muscle's weaker than army beer. Now let's consider another picture. The whole circulatory system of the human body. Remember that the heart is a muscle too. It pumps blood through the arteries to the tissues of the body. The tissues, especially torn tissues and wounds, need all the oxygen and nourishment they can get. The bloodstream brings it to them and then has to carry off the waste matter back through the veins to the heart and the lungs. But by now, the bloodstream has slowed up, so the veins need help from the muscle surrounding them. The muscles contract, press against the veins, which are like rubber tubes, and help squeeze the blood through. But muscles don't stimulate blood circulation automatically. 
you've got to work them yourself, which brings us right back to exercise. Here are two joints. One is out of bounds. The other is your knee joint. It's wrapped in a membrane called a capsule. If you don't exercise, the blood doesn't circulate. The tissues degenerate. The fat accumulates. The joint becomes stiff, immobile, useless. Now you want to know, how can you exercise that knee if you can't move it? If you begin flexing the muscle in the thigh and wiggling your toes, it's not only cute, it also pumps blood. The blood flows through the knee joint and keeps it from freezing. It prevents the capsule from thickening and growing stiff. The moral to the story is, uh, don't get stiff in any joints. And this is the way to prevent it. Exercise for the injured hand, even while it's healing. Exercise prescribed exactly as the doctor prescribes medicine. Right now, your limbs feel heavy. You're worried that you may be too weak. But that tag at the foot of your bed tells exactly how much exercise the doctor thinks you should have. At first, sure, you can't do very much, but you can do something. You get exercise graduated in easy stages, and little by little, the blood begins to circulate. Your muscles begin to breathe. Slowly, you begin to feel better. It doesn't look like a hospital, but that's the idea. And the idea works. A homemade exerciser built right here by the men themselves. And here's something else dreamed up by a patient. And this, too. It works. Little by little, step by step, you'll be getting back to normal. Of course, this has its disadvantages, too. For instance, you may be enrolled in this special course for prospective husbands. Ah, come on, it's not so bad. You're keeping your ward clean, your circulation moving, and you're pulling yourself back to health. You can go outdoors now. You're not well yet, but you're getting stronger all the time. You're enjoying the feel of outdoor wind and sun. Those fingers that were once so weak your arms and chest and legs are getting back that old snap. Feels good. Particularly if you remember to let go of the ball. Well, not perfect yet, but you'll get there. In fact, you'll be well enough for this. Touch football. To feel yourself alive and healthy again. That's, that's the greatest thrill in the game. And the bedpan bombers aren't such a hot team this season. It's good to rest. Sometimes, too. Soak up a little sun. But while your chest is getting tan, what's happening to your brain? Are you forgetting everything you knew? No, you're not. That's the second part of the program, keeping in practice. You'll be that much ahead when the cast comes off. So you're not losing your skills, you're actually improving them. The long weeks you spend getting well are not long anymore. They're not being wasted. You're still in the Air Force, even if you can't get out of bed. Because if you can't go to work, the work will come to you. Here's a radio to fix. Fixing it'll help make you better, too. The point is, this whole program's flexible. If you've been in combat, you'll be asked to pass on your experience to others, to teach others, or to learn from others. Maybe the life-saving tricks of camouflage. Maybe the latest in protection from gas. You're an American soldier, even in that consuit. You're going to be treated as such. You're going to make good use of all those empty hours they used to throw away. Sometimes you'll study outdoors, so you'll absorb sunshine and knowledge at the same time. You're going to be a better soldier and a better American. The tools are here. The books you want to read will be brought to you if you can't go to get them. Don't put your mind in a cast. Just because you're in a hospital, you've got time to get one step ahead. That tough section in the tech order, those courses from the Army Institute, blueprint reading, or business law, 
that class in mathematics you always meant to take. Here's your chance now. And if you've had enough credits, you may learn enough here to get a real civilian-type diploma. Whatever interests you is okay with the hospital. This boy's digging a line of Russian jive. How are you feeling? Как вы проживаете? Как вы проживаете? What is your name? Как ваше имя? Как ваше имя? Как ваше имя? Please be seated, King Chong. If you've got any special knowledge, the program can use you. There's no doubt this boy knows his Chinese. There might be some doubt about his pupils, though. But one thing you'll want to learn, and that is what's happening in this World War II and what's happening to you as a fighter in this war. Argue it out, it's important. One thing, hospital discussions can go just so far because nobody's really in good enough shape for a fist fight. So, talks and study, exercise and rest are doing their job. You're getting better. You're looking forward instead of back. Movies, what'll it be today? Maybe it's on airplane propellers, maybe on the war in China. Maybe that new picture on how to ditch and live. We'll see. We know now that the whole man has to get well, not just part of that man. You've got to exercise not only bone and muscle, but mind and spirit. If you're interested and busy, you'll get well faster and learn in the process. The basic principles of flying, the forces that act on a plane, thrust, drag, lift, and gravity. You'll see how to crash land a plane in unfavorable terrain. And live to tell the tale. The tactics of fighter bomber attack against mechanized targets. And the principles of flexible gunnery. Paperboy deflection over here on a bicycle. Yeah. Just remember, the deflection is always between the target and the tail of your bomber. But you have to make I've about... I've got it, I've got it. Now watch this. Between the joker and my own tail. Let's see, about here. Hey, what the hell, Doc? You're starting to get it. Starting? Brother, I got it! And one day you'll find you can laugh. Really laugh. You're on your way. And as you listen, those injuries don't seem to hurt quite so much. The best of it is, you've done most of it yourself. Maybe you've had a hand in this epic of love under the mortgage. Maybe you've just helped by laughing at the wrong jokes. Corny or not, if it helps you, it helps the Air Force. It's yours, personally. The whole convalescent training program. And if you've got any ideas, don't be modest. Let's have them. They may help somebody else get well. Yes, your ideas your program. It's you and this piano, you and this key, you and this book, you and this plane, you and this exercise that'll take you to this hospital entrance, facing out. You'll go back, confident you can hold your job. One battle's behind you, the battle with pain, with weakness, the battle with time. Now, to go to work on the Japs.